We have a special message from Alexa Soren, and she will be coming in remotely up on the screen here momentarily. Others of the world, unite. This was something I posted on Facebook a while back, possibly the only original thing I've ever posted. And I wanna tell you a little bit about the experience. For some reason at that time, I was mulling the idea of otherness, that feeling of being different, out of step, alien to those around me. I had been discovering that this was a feeling many people have at times, maybe even most people. At the same time, we all crave connection to feel not alone. It occurred to me that we could connect in sharing this feeling of otherness, even though we are other in different ways, that that in itself could be a way of bonding. Putting it this way, others unite, seemed amusing to me and my sister, who is one person who gets me, encouraged me to post it. Well, I did and I got some positive reactions and one very negative one. My niece, my sister's daughter, interpreted the post as mocking trans people, which is so not what I meant. And my niece is no longer speaking to me maybe because I didn't try hard enough or soon enough to understand her perspective and sensitivities. There are many ways of feeling other. For example, not liking chocolate, being the only person in a crowd uh, of one's race or language, interpreting a passage of scripture differently from the rest of the Sunday school class having a different political perspective from the rest at the dinner table, being unusually tall or short or physically unusual in any way, not being a sports fan, feeling uncomfortable with a stereotype society assigns to our biological sex, not seeing or liking a popular movie or TV show, not owning or wanting to own a smartphone, having an unusual hairstyle or color, taking precautions against a pandemic that many think is past or unimportant. Those who know me may well guess which of these apply to me. And one hint is I do like chocolate. We often pretend or go along to avoid the judgment and isolation that can come from taking the risk of showing our otherness. What if we lived in a family or community where each person felt safe showing otherness? What if when someone says or does something that seems outrageous, instead of judging or backing away, we paid more attention, listened with our ears and our hearts, tried to understand the other person's thoughts and feelings. This is not to suggest that we'd hesitate to stop someone from doing harm or that we'd end up all thinking or acting the same way. Just that with understanding, we might come closer to accepting and caring for each other while tolerating where possible and maybe even appreciating our differences, our different ways of thinking. Since I became a Christian, I've been interested in different affirmations of faith. A favorite is that of the United Church of Canada, which begins and ends with the words, we are not alone. I always thought of that as based on the words that come uh, right before the last statement, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. That is, we are not alone because God is with us. And I certainly do believe this, but I've also come to believe that God not only gives us himself for company, but he also gives us each other, each other, that his love for his children is most often expressed through his children. 
So I invite you to join me in the family where it is safe to be other and where we can bond without having to be the same. Thank you. The gospel reading today comes from Matthew chapter 6, verses 26 to 33. Look at the birds of the air. They neither soar nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet our heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? And which of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to the span of your life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not clothed like one of these. But God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven. Will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who seek all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given unto you as well. Good morning. For those of you who may not know me, my name is Toby Louise Kester. I've been a member of Epworth for almost 30 years. I can't believe I can say that now. I've been a lot of, on a lot of committees and part of a lot of activities, but probably you know me if you've been here before the pandemic, especially as a choir member, because I love to make a joyful noise to the Lord. As many of you know, I'm from Canada. After completing my undergraduate studies, I came to the U.S. to pursue a master's degree in landscape architecture. Along the way, I met my husband, and after 24 uh, years of very happy marriage, we have three kids, Aiden, Bryant, and Kevin. Next. If you travel about 13 hours slightly northwest from Baltimore, you'll end up in a little tiny town at the tip of the Bruce Peninsula called Tobermory. This is truly home for me. Next. Tobermory is home to two of Canada's national parks. Fathom 5 National Marine Park is a collection of islands and 22 shipwrecks off the shore of Tobermory. Bruce Peninsula National Park is a land park where you're going to find some of the most spectacular scenery and most incredible ecologically sensitive environments along the Niagara Escarpment. Not only did I grow up with these parks in both my front yard and my backyard, but also I worked for five years as a park interpreter when I was in college. So I know these parks really well. Next. When I'm, in think when I'm thinking of these parks, I think of the incredibly cold, crystal clear blue-green water that stretches to the horizon. I think of the eastern white cedar trees growing right out of the cliffs. A lot of these trees are smaller than I am, but they've been studied and found to be hundreds and sometimes thousands of years old. And next. And I think of orchids. Bruce Peninsula National Park is, boasts of being home to 44 different kinds of orchids. These orchids add incredible beauty to, and wonder to the park. As a landscape architect and ecologist, I've often thought about how amazing this diversity is and how it might have developed. Growing up, it was simply just there, until I really studied ecology and began practicing as a professional landscape architect. I sort of assumed that if you assembled plants in a place, lots of different kinds, you'd just end up with the diversity that you end up with at our park. And when we were working in the parks, we'd monitor the orchids closely so that we could direct the park visitors to those orchids while they were in bloom. Sadly, we would on occasion find that one or more of these orchids had been taken from the park, probably to be transported into a garden somewhere else in the world. There were even stories of them ending up in Japan. Unfortunately, we staff knew that most of the plants would not survive the trip. If you've ever tried to grow an orchid, you know how difficult it can be. They are very specific in their environmental and maintenance needs. At some point I realized, no matter how much you want and believe in diversity, 
it is hard to create it simply by transplanting something into a new environment. People are kind of like orchids. When we talk about bringing diversity into our homes, our organizations, and our communities, it's worth thinking about the orchids in Bruce Peninsula National Park. And there are really three elements to think about. The individual, the environment, and the ability of both the individual and the environment to withstand or adapt to change. First, think about the individuals. Every species of orchid is unique in its physiology. They all look different and grow differently. Some grow in large groups, some as individuals, without much of a visible community at all. Each species has its own timing for germination, growth, flowering, and seeding. Likewise, we people are all unique in our physical characteristics, in our patterns of development, and in our perspectives on the world around us. Our understanding results from the variety of experiences we have throughout our lives. God made us each unique, even though there are similarities we share in being his children. Secondly, consider the environment. Orchids have very specific environmental conditions in which they grow. They each need particular amounts of sun, water, nutrients, and protection. And like all plants, each orchid has a favored association with other plants, animals, and environmental conditions like climate, weather, and geology. At the same time, they each contribute differently to the environment in which they grow. Similarly, you and I each have our own set of conditions in which we would thrive. We each have our own needs and preferences in mind, in body, and in spirit. However, unlike the orchids, whose limits are set by nature and usually identified through scientific study, people are complex and often very difficult to understand. When we dream of utopia, it's often correlated to our specific stage and phase of life and the particular conditions we happen to find ourselves in. Elements within us and beyond us change constantly, and we respond to those changes often without predictability. Ultimately, we must each establish for ourselves our own needs and preferences and limits of what is acceptable to us. And then it's up to each of us to let others know when boundaries are crossed and limits are reached. Otherwise, like the orchids who perish when things become intolerable, we become overwhelmed and defeated. Finally, let's look at the ability to tolerate and adapt to change and how adaptable the environment is. Each species of orchid growing on the Bruce Peninsula has its own tolerance for change and ability to adapt to new conditions, but generally speaking, orchids are not known to have a high tolerance for change, which means if an orchid is lost in the one part of the park that it grows, that species may be lost to the park forever. It saddens me to know that since I was a park interpreter in the 1980s and 90s, two species of the orchids have already been lost. Fortunately, most people have a higher threshold for change and a greater adaptability to new situations and conditions than orchids. We can tolerate less than ideal conditions for a very long time. That is not to say that we should settle for living in less than ideal conditions, but we do have a greater flexibility than the orchids. Unlike the orchids, we can, at least to some extent, choose where we are, and we can directly influence the conditions in, li in which we live, work, and play. On a side note, I think it's very important to remember that one of the best strategies for resiliency that a plant has is laying seeds in the soil year after year. Seeds can remain viable for hundreds of years so that when and if conditions become right again, those seeds will germinate and start the cycle of development once more. We, on the other hand, can lay seeds of change as we go. Every day we are gifted opportunities to positively impact the lives of others in ways we may never know. But when we focus on doing the work of God's children, I have no doubt that God is laying the groundwork for his, his kingdom to come. As you think about increasing diversity in your homes and organizations and communities, remember the orchids. Even with a whole lot of love, transplanting something or someone into a new place 
does not ensure its or their success. The right environment and an ability to adapt are essential. So I invite you to think about how you can help to create diverse environments and communities. Learn about the people who come into your life. Really get to know them. They are each unique. And I believe that the understanding of their uniqueness will help you to discover how to use their God-given gifts that they have to offer in ways that God means for those gifts to be used. Share your own gifts and talents with them to help them feel connected and integrated into the community. Remember that we're each unique, no matter how similar we may seem to those around us. Don't assume that because someone acts like us or looks like us or talks like us, that they feel the same way we do. Ask them about their motives and purpose and meaning and share your own. Help others to understand the new conditions they find themselves in. If you know ways to help them be better prepared for whatever they're facing, find ways to share your knowledge and skills to give them confidence and competency. Life is so much easier when you believe you can get through whatever lies in front of you. A friendly smile goes a long way to building the right environment for a newcomer to feel like they have a place in their new surroundings. But don't stop with a smile. Reach out as one child of God to another, as a brother or a sister in the mission of God's work here on earth. Diversity is most successful when everyone is included in the community. Let the people around you tell you if the environment is working for them or not, and listen with an open heart to what they have to say. Stay rooted in your own firm relationship with God, but know that God understands what everyone needs, even when individuals may not. Don't underestimate his handiwork in building strong communities. When your own environment becomes uncomfortable, be open to change. Strive to ad adapt when change benefits the greater community. Sometimes change benefits everyone in the end. As much as we can admire the orchids in Bruce Peninsula National Park, we are God's children, and he has gifted us even more in life than the orchids. He has gifted us the opportunity to have a relationship with him. When we build relationships with one another, I believe we are talking to God. When you focus on understanding individuals, creating conditions that support diversity, and helping newcomers adapt to change, it is more likely that diversity will happen. This is the lesson that I take from the orchids in the Bruce Peninsula National Park, where beauty abounds and diversity thrives.